Hey, what's up YouTube? So I just actually just recorded some footage for this lightning arrow guy and it was actually pretty funny. You'll see this layer of the Hydra coming up later on. But I actually died on my character, but I'm actually a level 100 now. But just to show how authentic these videos are and how I don't actually cut out everything, you'll see the death in the, in the boss kill. So basically, this character reached a level 100. I did a bunch of five ways. And let's just say it was a blast and it's probably the fastest hundred I could have ever imagined. I didn't know that you could actually reach hundred so easily with doing five-way carries or just buying five-way carries. So now whenever I see people that are level hundred, I don't really respect them anymore. I'm like, how much did you pay for your five-way carries? So when I see people who are level hundred, I don't really know what to think anymore. It's like you can cheat the system by getting a hundred, but... Is it really cheating the system to just get more passive points to play your build? I don't know. But I used to always think that 100 was actually a legitimate long grind that took like days upon days to do. If you just did like maps and stuff. But I feel like nowadays most people just buy the 100 carry and it's actually probably pretty hard or it's pretty time consuming to actually get to 100 legitimately through just mapping and doing all the content. And it would take you quite a while. Like last league, I was able to get my 100 by, what's it called? I did Valdos here, right, with T19. It was actually faster than 5 ways. However, the problem is that this league, this King Harbinger node down here, is now, the King Harbinger spawns really, really slowly. So instead of the Valdos uh, pack just appearing at once and you instantly going over there and one-shotting the pack and getting a bunch of XP, you actually pretty much have to wait there for like 10, 20, 30 seconds just waiting for the Harbingers to spawn. So the XP feels really, really bad, even if your build is absolutely crazy. Now, I just wanted to go over the final like build, the final, uh, what's it called, a gear I had. I didn't really make any changes, but there is something that's pretty notable in this bow that I tried out. And it actually made a big difference in my, uh, what's it called, my clear speed for the five ways. And I was actually able to reach the XP amount that people were promising. Because if you look in the, what's it called, the tft discord a lot of people promised like three to four percent and four percent was always this mythical figure that i thought was impossible but it turns out the people who can offer you four percent just have the best gear and like anything in this game gear is everything damage is everything and yeah when people have more damage they can actually give you four percent xp and it's actually not a lie like i thought so let's get into the gear overview then i'm going to show you the worst pop i've ever seen you do not even want to believe what you probably just want to hide your eyes when you look at this video later on. But let's get straight into the gear overview. So for the gear overview, I actually obtained this bow. Um, uh, what's it called? Viewer actually let me this bow, right? So he, want, I, he wanted me to realize how good a mirror bow is. Because I always was of the opinion like, oh, I can just use a multi-modded bow. So this is my old bow over here. So this bow over here versus this one. So... It's actually crazy, right? This bow here is like pretty good, but the damage difference is insane. Like when you do the five way carries, you no longer need a barrage when you use this mirror bow because your lightning arrow will just kill everything. Now, if you look at the differences, both bows have 13% attack speed. Both bows have tier one cold damage and two additional arrows and the cold damage with dex. So the only difference is the 14% double damage and the fact is 16% pen instead of, what's it called, instead of 13%. And the fact that it's tier 1 flat code instead of T2. And it's also a thicket bow, so it has more attack speed, so it scales better with head under buffs. Now, this damage is, the damage difference is actually absurd. Like, I don't really know what it is on pop, but in terms of how it feels when you do the 5-way carries, using a mere bow is absolutely crazy and if you actually want to get the most customers and have the most satisfied customers the customers will literally be crawling to you on their hands and knees begging you to do another run that's what it will feel like you'll give them four percent three percent on average easily and they will be begging you to do another run that's how big of a difference it is but overall the rest of my gear is pretty much the same so we have the fractal dots the solstice vigil the tamings the Hyries, the Shadows and Dust, the Headhunter, the Bubonic Trail, and Hyries Demise. So in the end, I've realized that upgrading your gear actually matters for five ways. 
Like if you use an Arbor X bow, you probably would struggle to reach 2% XP at 99. But so the gear upgrades you could do, you could get a Blizzard Crown. And you would get like shaped, um, what's it called, nearby enemies take more damage and stuff like that. And you would also get a Solstice Vigil of an extra curse. And then you would use two rare rings with Assassin's Mark. So you have Assassin's Mark and Ellie Weakness. And your other ring would just be full of damage with the Shaper mods and cold damage. Or you can use a Mark of the Elder Ring. And then Bubonic Trail I think is fine because the Abyss Jewels are OP. Headhunter is fine. And the Quiver, you could probably use a rare Quiver. With additional arrow, life, and some multi and some damage. So let's see. I don't know if anyone has a good setup, right? So this is how I actually check out the setups. So overall, for lightning arrow, the damage actually matters. So if you want to offer the best five-way carry service, you should probably invest into some of these things. So what is the guy who has the most insane? So inspired learning, right? So this is all the people who use lightning arrow. And wait, what even happened to this thing? Oh, this was a ritual league. You see a ritual league, no one played lightning arrow because the self curse KB was so strong. But now this league, people are actually playing lightning arrow. So this guy has like a pretty good setup. So you lose the rampage gloves. You could technically lose the rampage gloves if you use if you found another way to get Ellie weakness curse, and you could. Weapon swap to get rampage. You can either glove swap, weapon swap, or you can use the put the rampage belt on, kill a mob, and then put the head on her on. But you can see this guy has two rare uh, rings. His quiver is pretty mediocre. So this guy doesn't have the perfect setup. The people who do have the perfect setup actually have it hidden so it doesn't show up on here. So that's kind of unfortunate, but you just have to trust me when I say that there's people out there who have absolutely insane gear. So like this guy here has, oh wait, this is the wrong one, this is the other one. So this person here has a blizzard crown, like I said, that gives like multi, more pen, and a projectiles pierce an additional target. Plus two high res, mark of the elder of another ring. So this guy has a pretty GG setup. Now he could use a different rare quiver, but getting a plus one chain uh, rare quiver is pretty rare. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the build. It was actually a very fast 100. The tree, I don't think I could change that much. It's pretty uh, cookie cutter. Mm, but yeah, I mean, this is the build. I was able to reach 100 on it. And I would definitely try playing again if I wanted to do another character. I would definitely try to upgrade the gear. Because it is pretty fun to try to get more and more XP for your uh, party members. Because they really are thankful. Like some people will say, wow, this is the best experience I've ever had in PoE. Like... I literally had someone say that to me. He said when he was in the 5-way carries, he was playing the game wrong and that he had never had a better experience in PoE. So that's how you make someone's day by playing this build and just upgrading your gear. It really warms the heart, right? It makes it so that people actually respect you and how you provide this amazing service. So try to upgrade your gear as much as possible. No, I'm kind of memeing, but it is nice to see the improvements. Oh, it kind of sucks when you're at 100 and you can't see your XP go up anymore. But anyhow, let me move on to the worst pop I think I've ever seen. So yesterday, what I was looking at... So yesterday I did the pop review of the Eternity Shroud person who almost had like 1 billion DPS. Or he had like 23 mil average hit. So I was wondering like, this guy's gear is good and all, but it's not like out of this world perfect, right? So why don't I try to go look in Ultimatum League to see why there's no Eternity Shroud Penance Branders on there at all. And I found this... So, this guy here is 672k. I'm like, oh, this guy must not have too good of gear, right? But he has Eternity Shroud, so what is wrong? So I looked at this gear, right? Now, at first glance, it's nothing really too special. So, he has Badger the Brotherhood shape, shape Void Batteries. Okay, this guy's kind of poor, right? Not the richest person in the world, probably. Can't afford everything. Shaped Call of the Brotherhoods. Oh, that's pretty expensive. And then... Whoa, this is my helm! Like, this is literally my helm I have on my aura stacker. It has a mirrored helm. And I'm like, oh, that's it's pretty good. And then I go look at this, and it's like, it's okay. It's not like double corrupted or anything. No Ellie weakness, curse on hit. Then I looked at this. A shaped head on her. And I'm like, what? And then I look at the enchant on it. Enemies blinded by you have 30% reduced crit chance. It's like, wait, why don't you use a nerve? Like, aren't you using a nerve thing? Yeah, he has an unnerved cluster. And these boots are, these boots are actually pretty bad. No life on them. 
80% chance to stun. So this guy's gear is just baffling to me. It's like, why does he have this uh, setup, right? So then I looked at the flasks and then I'm like, whoa, where is the bottle faith? You're telling me you can afford a shaped head on her and you can't afford a bottle faith. But the main thing that I saw was that this guy's damage is horrendous. Like you look at this guy's gear, 23 million, right? 672k. Like that's a factor. That's not one difference. That's not double the damage. That's not three times the damage. That's like 50 times the damage. Granted, the guy's like probably using some pop warrior tips like I showed you last time, but how is it how could it be so different? And then I just start looking through the links, right? So you have penance brand, swift brand, awaken control, destruction, anomalous inspiration. And Penance Brand, Anomalous Cult to Fire. So he's not using this extra conversion chain, right? And then I looked through the links, right? So this guy has a 6 link in here. Now he has Righteous Fire, which he's obviously not using. Or any of the Heralds. So you can see in this demonstration here that a lot of the multipliers really add up. But then I saw this guy's not even using Zealotry. And Zealotry... He has a Zealotry enchant on his helm, right? But he's not using Zealotry. And Zealotry is probably one of the most important auras you can run because it gives you more spell damage and it gives you spell crit. So this is called a disaster of a build. And if you look at the skill tree, it's like... It's just not good. And it really illustrates how much more multipliers like matter, right? Like even though this other profile that I reviewed is pretty similar geared like the more multiplier just stack up so much like missing the zealotry more multiplier missing all the crit multi from not having the jewels be quad multi or tri multi because it's not like this guy's gear is that much cheaper than this guy's this guy has a shaped head on her right so that's extremely expensive not using a bottle of faith is actually just mind-blowing to me um brand loyalty and grand design like that's just not how it works how could you have the single target and use brand loyalty grand design granted his single target might just be so high that you would never notice but this person clearly has no idea what he's doing and it's actually just crazy that he has the shaped head on her and everything and the helm so it really shows you right when you go to copy a person's profile you should never just copy it blindly right like say like i was a random noob which i probably am and i go see oh i want to do a tourney shroud build and then i copy this person's profile right and then i take his gem links and then i don't even have zealotry on the links right and obviously void battery with badger the brotherhood is not that great of a setup compared to using uh two rare wands because you probably don't have enough cast speed i think although i'm not 100 percent sure it's probably pretty good with the badger the brotherhood though so it's not like the end of the world but this really illustrates the importance in actually like looking over the build and maybe getting a build review perhaps or maybe spending some money on that instead but overall the damage difference was just astounding right because all it is is just a rare one like this guy here has a better helmet than this person so the only difference is these two wands and the amulet and what is on these wands so these wands have gains percent of fizz as extra lightning and gains percent of non chaos as extra chaos damage and gains so this has like gains 12% of elemental damage and extra chaos damage it just shows you how much damage the wands actually give even if they're power charge stack compared to this person and then the amulet is just I mean the amulet allows him to run a zealotry I'm pretty sure right because he has the reduced reservation so having the reduced reservation will allow him to run three auras that are 50% zealotry wrath and hatred which is what everyone actually runs and having another more multiplier on top of everything really uh, scales it. Now, this person also only has two large clusters. And having two large clusters is a pretty big difference. So overall, pretty similar builds, right? Pretty similar items in terms of cost. But one result is like 20, 30 times damage higher. And that really shows you why aura stackers are such... Um, fickle creatures to build right because the aura stackers you're missing a, some more multiplier here and there and it really adds up so you can see how much it actually adds up from two people's builds so don't blindly copy people's pobs and make sure that you have all your more multipliers 
So that's why low life is so much damage with RF, and that's why crit multi is so important. That's why having all your auras are important. That's why having 90% res for the nebulous is important. That's why a 6 link is so important, or a 7 or 8 link in this case, because every single more multiplier is just a huge damage scaling thing. So, And that's why like curses are important. Everything just gets multiplied on top of one another to create these huge numbers. Tell people get like 1 billion DPS or whatever, one or 100 million and stuff like that. So if you look at any of these pobs and you ever wonder, how do people have, uh, what's 1.5 billion? In the end, it's just stacking a billion more multipliers or, or just having 7 watcher's eyes. I guess that does the trick, right? 7 watcher's eyes is a pretty good way to get a lot of more multiplier. Yeah, that's actually one way. How about this person? Hmm... Yes, I think, okay, so you just need to stack Watcher's Eyes, I get it now, so Watcher's Eyes are OP. But anyhow, I'm gonna um, play some clips from the, from mapping on the bow build that finally reached 100 just to showcase how it actually looks like in some maps, and then I'll maybe show a 5-way with the Mirror Bow, because the Mirror Bow actually made a big difference, and it was actually pretty fun to play with, but I hope you enjoy it, and yeah, this build was actually a blast to play, and I will try to making another five-way guy after the gauntlet race. So I'm going to record a quick video because a lot of people ask, like, how does this build handle mapping and bossing? Well, the answer is, is that bossing One is some huge is issues, right, I'm with the build. Like, it's not, uh, it's just not good in terms of, I try to do Uber Elder a few times that when you have this low of HP, it just doesn't work out right. So I would highly advise against like doing bossing with this build. So if you wanted to play this build, you should probably have another character set up for bossing on the side or something. But in terms of map clear, it's pretty amazing, right? You have Mirage Your Archer, you can pretty much just run through everything. Count. And honestly, the Mirage Archer could kill everything, right? And you could do like map bosses and stuff like that pretty easily because you have headhunter buffs going into it somewhat. But you'll kill it pretty fast. But overall, it's a very fun mapping character to play. It's like a pretty much a bow build. We really wanted to play a mapping character with it. I mean, we can even pop the Legion. Is that actually cheating to get some buffs before we go into a boss fight? We only have seven buffs. So that's not too crazy, right? So it's like, it does the damage, right? But that's with the head of the buffs and everything. And it clears the map pretty well. But that's just how, um, it's just how uh, most um, head of the builds are. So I hope that shows the cases that you can actually do maps on this. But without the head on the buffs, and if you're trying to do sires or something, it's probably going to be a lot harder to manage. So here's another quick little map demonstration. Like in the end, this build is One meant to do five ways. Like when you build a build for something, you want it to be the best in class for the thing now, you're trying to do, right? And this build is meant for five ways purely. But you can map with it, you can play around with it, you can probably adjust it to I make it better for bossing. But in terms of like speed victims. mapping, it's actually not too bad. So like, even though it's not designed to be a good speed mapper, if you have Headhunter, it's going to feel really good if you, have, if you have a lot of uh, rares in the map. Of how fast you clear the map and with Solstice Vigil, for map clearing this build is actually pretty strong. And I would rate it as a pretty high uh, clear speed build. But you're not always going to get the right amount of Headhunter buffs, right? You're not always going to get a rare. And a lot of the mapping, the DPS will just come down to the Headhunter buffs you get. If you get the DPS buffs... Yeah, that stretches the but you can see it's very squishy, but it does the damage.
So anyhow, I hope everyone enjoyed the videos. The build is actually really fun to play in maps. It actually kind of makes me miss playing bow builds in maps. Being always a caster. Yeah, bow builds are pretty fun. It's just a shame they're so squishy. You don't have access to fortify. You have horrific HP pool. Only way there's a way to play like a CI bow build or something and make yourself a little tanky or have a little more HP or EHP. But... This character's journey has come to an end. It was a pretty fast journey. Tomorrow I will be playing the Burning Crusade. So be sure to check out the stream if you want to see some WoW content. I will probably make a few videos on WoW and my character's journey there. And next up in PoE is pretty much just going to be the Gauntlet race. And then I actually have an idea for the next project which is an Eternity Shroud or a Stacking Wander. So I was thinking to myself like how can I make Eternity Shroud work with Aura Stacker? So I can't, I want to be CI, right? Because you can't wear a shav, so that means I have to be CI. So why not just make an attack build since I can only CI? And then I need to have all my items be shaped, right? And I can't get a shaped nebulous because it's just impossible. So why not try a wander? I know a lot of people want to see a wander, so... I would definitely be doing an Eternity Shroud or a Stacking Wander next after the Gauntlet, so... That will be the next evolution in the aura stacker and I'm going to try to make a wander that actually has respectable single target and doesn't require gem swapping. But anyhow, if you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. Check out my Twitch stream. I'm going to be playing some WoW in the coming days. And thanks for watching everyone and I hope you find more mirrors and exalts than I do.